Good day there, this is Joe Van Cleve. If you go back to roughly April of 2015 in my uh, video channel, you'll see a video I made called Instant Box Camera Part 1. And what this was, was an introductory video to a project I had started, which was to build what I called at the time an instant box camera, and which is really better termed an Afghan box camera or an Afghan street camera. Um, there are other terms for these, but they're essentially a paper negative uh, box camera with a built-in darkroom for processing black and white paper operated via an arm sleeve. And these were used in a lot of countries for taking portraits of people on the streets. Now, because I had spent so many time, years involved with shooting paper negatives in box cameras of various kinds, it seemed inevitable that eventually, once I found out about these cameras, I would probably get interested in building one for myself, which I did back uh, a year or so ago. But I haven't done much with it since, and now I've started to work with it in a new way. Um, so these cameras initially used regular black and white photo paper, which is a negative process. When you shoot a person's portrait on this paper, you have a negative image. And what you had to do is mount this uh, print on an easel in front of the camera lens and then re-photograph it with another piece of paper to make a positive uh, image. Um, I had done this. Um, the camera had used a little paper safe box with two different kinds of paper in it. The glossy RC paper for the negative and the luster finish paper for the print. So let me show you the quick layout of the camera and some of the changes I'm doing to it now that I've uh, begun working with it again. Well, this is my version of an Afghan street camera, Afghan box camera. It's an enclosure, square uh, on the, uh, from the front view, large and rectangular from the side view. Here's the left side. It has an arm sleeve uh, that is made from two layers of blackout fabric. This fabric I purchased um, via the internet and found that you needed two layers of it in order for it to be truly light tight. It's, uh, it's mounted to a sewing hoop, one of those wooden sewing hoops behind this plate, and it fits into a groove in the plywood, so there's like a light trap. By taking these four screws off, I can take this plate off and I can remove and uh, service this uh, sleeve if I needed to. It has an elastic cuff and it's quite long and works quite well. On the inside of the sleeve, uh, in the area here where your arm goes through, there's a sliding door that also enables you to close up the camera so you can take your arm out safely without fogging your paper. So the front of the camera has a lens board that's mounted uh, for speed graphic style four inch square lens boards and that's a lens board that I just made from thin aircraft plywood. This is a Fujinon uh, 135 f 5.6 lens and uh, it's a nice modern lens for uh, this kind of application. I also have the 127 f 4.7 speed graphic lens I can also use. Uh, loosening this knob, this little bracket slides over, take this wooden plate off and then the lens board pops right out. So, on the right side of the camera is the door assembly, which I'm going to take that off afterwards, but I want to show you first the back of the camera. The back of the camera has a little viewing trap door, if you will, or uh, you unlatch it, you open it up, and inside you can actually see, uh, of course the lens is closed right now, but um, you can see maybe the ground glass there. And the idea is you have a focusing rod, and you can operate the whole, you can alter the position of the ground glass view screen to set the focus, which you do with a bulldog clip that you attach to the rod right back here, which limits how far back you can pull it. That's your preset focus distance. And when you push it all the way forward, it's all the way in the front of the camera for you to uh, uh, load the, uh, the film area with, with paper with photo paper. So the lid comes off with two latches, the side lid, two latches, and it's just a large uh, piece of plywood. It has a wooden frame around it that interacts with the uh, frame of the box to make a light trap. And uh, this is the internals. So the uh, view screen and film holder area are right here on your right. And there is a 
little screw eye that I turn and then I can pull the, I normally do this from the other side, it's a little more difficult doing it from this side. I pull the ground glass view screen down and you can load up paper into that area and then fold it back up and latch it into place for taking the photo. I recently installed this string right here which keeps the ground glass view screen from falling down into the chemicals. Uh, so that's kind of nice. <laughs> and if I move the tray out of the way, the developer tray, there's a paper safe in the back of the camera which is really a dark cardboard box which uh, fits into a wooden pocket back there that protects the front open end of the box from being fogged. And to actually use that box, I have to first push the view screen all the way forward. And then I would slide the box back and rotate it 90 degrees. And then the open side would be up. And I would be able to remove a sheet of paper, lean it back here, or put the sheet of paper into my arm sleeve. And then I would pull the view screen back a little bit, open up the glass, and stick the piece of paper in there to get it into the exposed position put the uh, paper safe back into place in its little pocket so it's sealed up. And then you would pull back the view screen to its preset position and you'd be ready to take your picture. So I've been using this camera with uh, these three trays, developer, stop bath, and fixer. And I'm thinking about modifying the process of what I do. And what I'm thinking about doing is getting rid of the stop bath um, because my concern is being able to make this process as fast as possible for in the in the field, if you will. And so by moving the uh, developer tray back, eliminating the stop bath, I'll be able to gain at least 30 seconds on my process. But it also makes room up here in the front now for me to install a new style paper safe, which would be a flat box about an inch tall that whose lid uh, if you push the view screen all the way forward, you would have a lid that, that hinges up and you could just remove one sheet of paper, close the paper safe back down. This will give me more capacity for paper and make it a little bit easier to load the paper in there. Another change I'm going to do is I'm going to use more concentrated fixer and shorten the fixing time so the paper still gets adequately fixed, takes less time, and then there's less rinsing required because the paper was in the fixer for a shorter period of time. So more concentrated fixer, shorter fixing. I'll still have to do three, seconds devel uh, three minutes developing with the Harman direct positive paper, which is what I'm going to be using now instead of uh, the negative type paper. So as I alluded to earlier, um, I used to use this in the traditional fashion of negative paper and then rephotographing the negative on a bracket in front of the lens, reprocessing that other piece of paper uh, to make a positive print. So that requires two processing um, steps uh, and, and also the, the complex setup of getting the, uh, the printing easel lined up properly and the thing focused on it. It just takes up more time. I'm now going to be using Harman Direct Positive Paper in this camera in a one-step process. Um, the good point of this is that it only needs one processing step and it doesn't require the printing easel and the second processing step. The downside or the difficulty would be that it's fiber-based paper instead of resin-based paper, and which means that it's going to need a more effective rinse since the chemicals, especially the fixer, gets into the fibers of the paper. If you don't remove that adequately, it'll degrade the print over time. And then the other problem is fiber paper takes uh, a while to dry, and when it does dry, it likes to curl. So I'm going to have to come up with some unique ways of fixing both of those problems or addressing those problems. But I'm intrigued about the idea of using Harman Direct Positive Paper because my paper safe it only has to have one kind of paper in it, and I only have to figure out an exposure system for one kind of paper. So let's go take a look at how I do this out in the backyard. I'm going to try taking a picture of myself, a selfie, uh, with this camera. So I'm set up here in my backyard to do this project, this self-portrait. Today is kind of a bad day for this because it's trash day, so we have the sound of trash trucks, and there's a roofing crew on a house behind me re-roofing a house. So it's going to be real noisy, so I'm going to have to wear this microphone 
during uh, this taping and hopefully it won't be too bad of a sound. But basically we have our instant box camera here set up on the tripod, my little posing chair, and I'm going to show you a quick little uh, layout of how I do this. So I'm using one of these tripods, an old tripod called a Bruno's folding tripod, and I have a base on it that is an old shelf, and the uh, Afghan street camera sits on that base. I have made some shelving that made of uh, laminate flooring panels that screw together, and it makes gives me a lower storage shelf. And then I have this rolling um, file cabinet system that I can use to transport everything in it, including the cameras, which sits on top there. And so I'm going to pose myself uh, in front of this trellis, and hopefully we can get some uh, pictures. So you might be wondering how I'm going to be focusing and composing the picture of myself. Well, the way I do it is I took the tripod that that camera is mounted to, and I set it in place of this chair. Then I have a focusing target. It's a piece of cardboard with a black and white target and a string, and I tape this target to the front of the tripod at about the same height that my head is, and then I can focus on the target in the back of the camera and then uh, set the bulldog clip for that focus distance. Now, when I seat myself in front of the camera, I'm going to put this focusing target about even with my eyes on the side of my eyes near my temple, and by pulling the string taut to the same amount of tightness that it was when I focused, now I can get my head centered laterally on the box camera and a little bit above center so my head is near the top part of the picture and I'll be able to trip the uh, remote shutter release with my other hand. So what I'll do is I will get myself set and I will slowly lower the target and then I will trip the shutter. So I've poured up some fresh chemistry in these bottles and now I need to get them loaded into the camera. I've also loaded the paper safe with just four uh, pieces of uh, Harman Direct Positive paper, so I cut them out of one uh, eight by 10 sheet of paper. So here's my developer. And I mix that fresh. I have uh, some lines here on the, on the bottle that helps me mix it from water and liquid concentrate. I apologize for the background noise. Here's the stop bath, which is really just uh, household vinegar diluted. And here's a fresh bash, batch of fixer, uh, one to seven uh, for paper. All right, I'm going to seal up the back of the side of the camera here, and I'll load up the paper. And then I'm going to get my light meter, and I'm going to meter the scene and see how much exposure I'm going to give it. And oh yeah, I also want to level the camera out. I'll use a bubble level for that. Okay, for metering myself, I'm using my Gaussian Luna Pro F because this is the meter I've been using all along for Harman Direct Positive Paper. It's an analog meter, so it has a little bit more accuracy in terms of being able to extrapolate between the settings. So I've set my ISO to about 8. I'm going to use reflective metering, and I'm going to set, my, uh, set it onto my face zero the needle, and it suggests that the exposure should be about a quarter second between f5.6 and f8. I'm going to overexpose it slightly from the meter. I'm going to set it to f5.6 only because my, um, my skin tones are usually want to give a little bit more detail for the skin tones. Okay, to make this exposure, I'm going to have to first set my <coughs> focus position to the preset distance on this target. So I set the target next to my eye, adjust my head position, so I look centered and a little bit above center vertically. So I'm going to hold my um, head still and move this target away. Now I also would like to reflect a little light onto my face with this little reflector screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the focus target. I'm going to take the shutter release cable now. I'm going to hold this reflector screen up and now my meter suggested f5.6 at a quarter second, but I know through experience that you have to kind of overexpose it for the flesh tones, so I've gone with one whole second at f5.6, and so we'll see how that turns out. And I've processed the print uh, for three minutes in the developer, 30 seconds in the fixer, and uh, two minutes 
the, fi the uh, two, 30 seconds in stop bath, two minutes in fixer. And let's see, pull it right out of the fix here. Let it drip a little bit. Wow. I'm pretty impressed. Dang. Let me stick it in the rinse aid here. This is fiber paper. In order to reduce the rinsing time, I have to use a rinse aid, like a surfactant that helps to get the chemicals out of the fibers of the paper. I do that for about a minute, and then we'll do two and a half or three minutes in the rinse water, and then we have to figure out how to dry the print quickly. Let me show you how I do that. Okay, now for the drying of the prints, I've been experimenting with a little device that I call a solar-powered hot box. And it's really one of these Tupperware containers. And I have the direct positive print. Now this is a test print uh, before the exposure you saw me make. Um, so this has been sitting in the sun for 15 minutes. So the total processing time of this was 25 minutes. And what I have, I have a piece of black foam core board with gaffer's tape, and I'm using this um, artist's masking tape, and this thing is really hot. I'm hoping in the future to find a thin piece of iron, black iron, about a quarter inch thick, and this thing would get red hot almost, or not red hot, but certainly hot enough to uh, dry the print. So this has only been sitting in here for 15 minutes. Now I'm going to have to set the camera down and take the tape off, but we'll see how this looks, whether it looks dry or not. Okay, so this print took a total of 25 minutes to process and dry, and it's amazingly dry. The emulsion side is perfectly dry, the back is dry, and actually, so fiber-based paper has a natural tendency to, to curl toward the front side when it dries. Because I've dried this against a hot plate in a hot box, taped down, I actually have a re slight reverse curl, which is really ideal for this. So I'm really excited about this, being able to have a perfectly dry fiber-based print after only 15 minutes of drying in a solar hot box. So I really like this. This is great. Uh, now, the print that we just made, that you saw me just make, is currently in the rinse water. And let's see. That is really pretty damn good for a selfie, if I must admit so myself. So I'm going to have to get this print in the hot box and dry it. Okay, after a 15 minute uh, dry in the uh, hot box, here is my good print of the two. So this initial test print I did, I overexposed it by one stop. So the meter recommended uh, a quarter second uh, around f5.6, maybe halfway between 5.6 and, and 8. I gave it uh, a half second at 5.6, so it was really about one and a half stops over. But the, faces were, the face was still dark. So this one, I exposed it at uh, one second at f5.6, and uh, it really did come out about perfect as far as the face exposure. And so I'm uh, pretty happy with that uh, picture, considering it was a selfie and I was managing a reflector, a uh, shutter release cable, the focusing aid, and of course shooting video at the same time. So that was pretty cool. but. Uh, very happy with the results, and I'm getting at 25 minutes total time for these prints, which is in the ballpark of what you might want to do if you were doing it out on the street for people. I think it was inevitable that I would uh, get involved in building my own Afghan box camera, street camera, considering that I had been doing uh, using paper negatives in pinhole cameras and glass lens cameras for decades. It kind of made sense that eventually once I found out about them, I would, uh, I would start to build one uh, because of my, the background I have in, in camera building. The thing that's kind of interesting about the history of the Afghan box camera is I believe this kind of technology started in the early uh, 20th century when um, paper manufacturers first began to create uh, high quality silver gelatin uh, print paper and also some early versions of direct positive paper. 
And there was a few commercial um, camera manufacturers who built itinerant street photographer cameras, which are just like what we did, what this is in, in operation. Um, they sold them to f people who wanted to, to travel around taking pictures and develop them in the camera. The technology itself after World War II kind of went on a decline for a lot of years, except in some second and third world countries. And then uh, most notably, uh, I think in Argentina and places like Cuba, Argentina, India, and uh, Bangladesh and Pakistan, those kind of places, they, they continued to thrive. Um, in Afghanistan, the technology kind of went on the wayside during the Taliban regime. And then when the American war in early, early 2000s uh, um, overthrew the Taliban government, there was a resurgence of interest in uh, these kind of cameras because uh, Afghanistan citizens found themselves in need of official passport and ID photos as part of the new American-led uh, uh, government. And so there was a resurgence of interest in these cameras in the aughts. Uh, now they've kind of gone on the wayside as the economy has continued to improve, and especially in Afghanistan as now digital photography of cell phones is much more prevalent. But I thought it, it was important to kind of preserve this kind of technology to relearn how uh, these pictures are made um, in the hopes that people in the future and you people out in the Internet might be able to pretty easily, in fact, uh, build your own and experiment with this wonderful process. Well, until next time, this is Jovan Cleave, and keep shooting.